This sermon was recorded at the Church of Christ Northwest Arkansas. We are Christians seeking to worship God in spirit and in truth according to the New Testament. Come worship with us Sunday mornings at 1030 at 1708 Elm Springs Road in Springdale, Arkansas. The title lesson today that I'm going to talk about is stress. Stress and anxiety. James 1, starting in verse 2, says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Other translations will actually translate this as uh, trials of various kinds. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. This is one of those things that it's, it's easy to say. Be patient. But honestly, patience is hard. Patience is hard when you're going through these trials and you're stressed, and you don't know what to do. God has a plan. It will take time. Just telling somebody to be patient, to hold on, and don't worry, even calm down, just doesn't always work. If you've ever told someone to calm down, you know that it it doesn't work necessarily the way that you plan it to work. And I don't know about you, but I often look at these verses, and I think that... It means I need to just hold on. I need to be patient. I need to brace myself. But that's it. I just need to hold steady. And I think that I can handle it. I can handle this stress. I can handle this pain. I can do this on my own. And a lot of us kind of grew up with a a man up mentality to, to deal with it. Just deal with whatever's going on. You didn't necessarily feel like you had the support there to deal with what was going on. And God has a bigger plan in mind when it comes to dealing with stress, to dealing with anxiety, than just brace yourself and hold tight. The type of stress that we can feel often can vary. And it comes in from different places and as we talk today, but God's playbook for tackling this stress is more than just holding on. Stress takes two main different kinds of forms. We have the physical stress, things that are often outside of our control or things that we put ourselves in, things of the world, essentially. That can be work, that can be school, that can be maybe you broke your leg, maybe something's happening outside of us. Maybe you push yourself too hard. Maybe you're trying too hard in life and just everything seems to be crashing around you. Maybe you're stretching yourself too thin. It can also include losses in life. It can lo- include things like, you know, losing your property, losing family, losing friends, losing your health. Job is one of the greatest examples of this. And I'm not going to dive too deep into Job. But, man, he lost his land. He lost his family. He lost his friends and he lost his health. And that's, that's stress beyond what a lot of us can think of. That's stress that a lot of us have dealt with. And we have mental stress. You have worry, anxiety things that you're just, you're focusing on that you can't control necessarily. That stress can also come from actions that other people committed against you. Things that other people have done in your life. And it's not necessarily, and I realize that is a physical thing, but at the same time, sometimes we hold on to these things. We hold on to things that we've done ourselves. And what that does is it, it bears down on us and it makes it hard to, to walk in life. It makes it hard to do anything. And some of you are wondering why I have the jugs here. <laughs> but if you start holding too many things, if you start holding work too much and you start holding the idea of you have to work hard, you have to struggle, you have to bear this on your own. You don't have to have help. You have to bear this on your own, right? Or maybe it is family burdens, stuff like that. And you, you feel like, I can handle this. I have to do this 
on my own. Maybe it's stress from the past and things that you, you've been thinking about. You can't let go. You can't forgive. You can't let go of these burdens that have been placed in front of you. Maybe it's things that you've done yourself. And eventually, it starts adding up. All these things start to add up, and it makes it to where you can't do anything. You're full. And it makes it hard, even emotional stress makes it hard to do anything. It makes it hard to sit down and pray. It makes it hard to, to open up your, stri- your scriptures at night, to study. And these burdens just bear down on you. And the cool thing about the church is that we don't have to do it alone. We weren't meant to carry stress and anxiety alone. We weren't meant to suffer and be in pain alone. Benefits that we have in Christ, excuse me, Psalm 40, (laughs) is that God cares for us. God listens to us and he hears us. Psalms 41 through 3, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. And he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, have the mire clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He loves us and cares for us. And he wants to help us Help pull us out of whatever pit that we feel like we're stuck in. Whatever pit that we feel like we're trapped in in life. God wants to help us because He cares for us, because He loves us. And if you follow Christ, you don't have to live in the darkness anymore. In John 8, 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. He wants to walk with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. You see it time and time again with Elijah and with all these different characters in Scripture. Walking is a sign of a relationship with God. And He wants you, with with a relationship, there's got to be a back and forth. You've got to be willing to talk to Him. You've got to be willing to listen to Him, to read His Word, and to study His Word. But you need to be willing to come forward. There's nothing, there's no problem that you have that is too great to bring to God. 1 Peter 5, 6-7 Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares, and again, some translations translate that as anxiety, upon Him. For He careth for you. He wants to be there for you. He wants to hold you. Through all this stress, through all all the pain that you've been dealing with in life, He wants to be there. He doesn't have to be there. He chose to be there. And in that, He gives us rest. If you look at Matthew 11, 28, He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. All you have been stressed, who have been struggling, who have been, feel like you've been carrying these burdens alone in life. All you who are weak and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You ever notice how your body shows these signs of stress? And it legitimately feels like you're physically carrying it. You don't have to carry it anymore. You don't have to carry it on your own. And, and the cool thing that we have through Christ, and, and it's, we also have the congregation. God knows that we can't do this alone. So He gave us the congregation. He gave us our church family. Ecclesiastes 4, 10 through 12, For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? 
If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We are stronger together. We are stronger together as Christians. And if you try to handle this on your own, it's not going to make you stronger in the end. It will make you weaker. You need to reach out. You need to be talking to other people, to fellow Christians. We are called to be one body. While we may have been alone at one point in time in our lives, as Christians, we are now part of something much larger than ourselves. Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth, being separate from the group, being outside of the group, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both, who had made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now, the, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are building fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Realize that he is talking about the Gentiles and the Jews, but the point that I'm trying to get across here is that we need to be working together as one body to deal with life, to deal with these anxieties, this pain and everything that a lot of us suffer with. And if you're not now, you will later. And that's what we're here for. That's what the church is here for. We are called to be together, and that means we need to love and support our family in Christ. We are called to help one another. In Galatians 2, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We need to assist each other in whatever one another is going through, whether that be physical sometimes, or whether that be emotional. Just to be there for one another, to help each other along life's way. In John 15, 13, he says, Greater love hath no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. We need to be willing to, to lay down and help each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also ye do. We need to encourage one another. Both in the Word and, and in prayer, we need to be there to help each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that said, you need to be willing to seek that help. We can't just wait for the help to come to us. In James 5, 5 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This can be hard. Now, honestly, I find it harder to confess to a brother or sister in Christ than I do to pray and confess to God. But we need that. We need each other. We need to be able to hold each other accountable. But 
we fear what people may think about us, maybe. Or, again, it goes back to that idea of you can handle this on your own. But we are one body. In 1 Corinthians 12, 26, And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. If you let yourself try and handle this on your own, it's not just going to hurt you. It affects the whole congregation. It affects your whole family. It affects your friends. It affects all those who are around you. And you need to be willing to seek growth through this. Uh, we, we talked about briefly coming out stronger and that idea of wading through this and coming out stronger, but that does not just come from being patient and just waiting it out. Proverbs 27, 17, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. You've got to be willing to seek that growth to ask somebody to study with you, to be there for you, to hold you accountable through all these things. Now, while Job was able to make it in his life, and God was glorified through Job, the cool thing is that we have the church to support us as well, which is what God intends for us, to support us and to help us in these times of need. Job had nothing other than God to help him. He didn't have friends. He didn't have family. He made it. But it's so much easier when you have your, your friends and your family in Christ. The closest example that I've ever seen to a modern-day Job was watching my new family, the Wallaces, go through what they had to go through. They had lost their homes, their home, lost a family member. They lost their health at times. But the church was there. The congregation was there and supported them through all of that. That's what the church is there for. It was the coolest, it was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. That's what we're supposed to be there for. That's why we need to be willing to reach out and grow closer together. When it comes to this stress, when it comes to this anxiety, we need to take care of ourselves in that. We need to watch ourselves. We need to pay attention to what we're doing because sometimes you don't notice. You don't notice yourself kind of slipping because you think you can handle it. You think you can do it. We need to watch ourselves. We need to study. That's part of self-care is studying God's Word. As a Christian, this is something that we need to do. In 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It provides us with wisdom. It provides us with knowledge. It provides us with encouragement. And this is part of that back and forth relationship that we need to be having. We need to be praying to God. We need to be talking to God, but we need to be reading his word and searching for what he has to tell us. And if you're struggling with that, Seek help. Find somebody to help you with that. Start looking at yourself and say, why am I struggling with this? Why am I finding it so hard to do this? Because there's probably something standing in your way. And you need to find help for that.
In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, we're also told to pray without ceasing. So we need to be willing to go to Him in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, be careful. Again, that's anxious in some translations. For nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, with which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that kind of leads into the next point being don't worry. Try not to worry. That's hard. Oh, man, it's hard to try not to worry. It's difficult because you see all these things coming up, and you're worried. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's... Man, when I was a server, that was, that was my main thing. I knew the slow season was coming, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet. But God is on your side. Matthew 6, starting in verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God is... If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take care, or tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God will take care of you. Don't worry about tomorrow. It's hard not to, but try not to stress the things that you can't control. Try not to stress the things that are outside of your control. God will take care of you. God will help you through your life. As long as you trust in Him, as long as you have faith in Him, God will provide the things that you need according to His will. We also need to be willing to forgive ourselves. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 18, God calls us a new creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You need to be willing to forgive yourself for the things that you've done in the past. And that's hard, but in Christ, you're not that person anymore. You laid that dead man aside. If you're baptized, you're risen again in him. You are a new person. And you have to be willing to forgive your past. And that's hard. You need to also be willing to forgive one another. Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. 
Forgiveness is probably one of the things that we struggle with the most. I struggle with forgiveness more than anything. Because it's so easy to think those thoughts, to, to remember the past. I've had problems with forgiving my family. That has caused me so much grief through the years. I've had problems with my father, with my sisters, even with my mom at times. And you have to be willing to set that aside. You have to be willing to forgive them. Just as Christ forgave us, you have to be willing to forgive them as well. And that's hard. And honestly, I've carried that up here before. I've had, there was a lesson I gave where my dad told me I couldn't do it, that I wasn't good enough. And that was so hard for me to set aside. But you have to. You need to be willing to forgive because you shouldn't have to carry those burdens. And you don't have to carry those burdens alone. We need to be willing to take time to rest. I already mentioned in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, where God says that he will give you rest. Come all who are weak and heavy laden, or who are labored. Let me go back up. <laughs> Let's see if I can find that again. There we are. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We need to take the time to rest. If you are too stressed and you are unable to rest, again, you need you got to talk to somebody. You've got to be willing to talk to somebody because it, it's only going to cause problems later down the road. It really is. And don't work too hard. Oh, I sh- yeah. I struggle with that one. We are called to work hard. And for the sake of Christ and for the church. And in Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. But be careful not to overwork yourself. In Psalms 127, starting in verse 2, It is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. He gives us rest. Don't try and overwork yourself. That comes down to don't worry as well. If you're so worried about money that you're overworking yourself, you're just going to be stretching yourself thin. But also there are times that we got to think about our own mental health and our own stress and Be worried about stretching ourselves thin and helping others. It is good to help other people. There is nothing wrong with helping other people. You need to be helping other people. But if you are stretching yourself so thin that you don't have time to have a good prayer life, if you don't have time to to read the scriptures, and you're so busy working on others that you, you can't work on yourself, don't stretch yourself too thin. Don't work yourself too hard. And we need to be willing to take care of ourselves physically as well. We see these scriptures about our body's a temple and stuff like that. You see a lot of big muscly guys using those. Uh, Romans 12, 1 through 2, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I'm not telling you to go get jacked. I'm not telling you to go go only eat such and such. And, but just take care of yourself. Just take care of yourself. Exercise, go on a walk. If you want to use that as fellowship time too, all the better. If somebody wants to come work out with me, come on along. We'll have a great time. But you got to be willing to try and take care of yourself. Don't eat seven burgers in one sitting. <laughs> take care of your body. And something else about exercise, it's actually been proven to help deal with stress, to help deal with anxiety. 
and spend time with others. More than just spending time with people, or wait, what are you Yeah, don't just spend time with people when you need them. Spend time with people as much as you can. Get that fellowship. Have fun with one another. Enjoy each other's time. Because that is going to help prevent the stress from building up and help you in those times of stress. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Spend time with one another. Enjoy one another's company. Grow closer together as a, as a congregation, as a group, as a family. And that will help you deal with the stresses of life. That will help you deal with those anxieties, that pain, that suffering that you're going through. I'm not expecting you to not feel that. Nobody expects you to not feel that. You're going to. It's going to happen. It's going to creep in. And if you don't try to do these things to help you, if you don't surround yourself by people that you love, it's only going to be harder. Stress, anxiety, struggles in life are too much for us to bear alone. God's plan is not for us to try and handle this alone. It's for us to lay down our burdens before Him and to seek help from those around us. Get help. Take care of yourself during these struggles. Pray, study, and seek fellowship. And take care of yourself. If anyone here is struggling with stress, if anybody is struggling with pain, with anxiety, if life feels like it is too much at times, feel free to come forward and seek the help of the congregation. You can do this after church if you're, more, if you're uncomfortable with coming forward while we sing. Or you can do so as we sing the song, or as we stand and sing the song that's been selected. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from God's Word. If there's anything we can do to help you in your walk with Christ, send us a message at facebook.com slash cfcnwa. To find more sermons, look for us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and like our Facebook page. Thanks for listening, and God bless.